something you'd almost call it as where he's shoveling his food or like hygiene's questionable yeah. and when, he, <laughs> when he eats he's like that's the full yeah. finger and that's every finger it is feral the younger one's the prettier one so that's me see uh, I've got that oh. zoom bundle here <laughs> no big, mate he's a legend big potato guy real big potato eater 350 pounds or so and then I was 315 when I did my pro day at the end of my senior year. I mean, I just knew I had to get bigger, stronger, faster. I mean, it's in the lack of talent. You can't sing, so you yell. I screamed in the metal band in college. I only say this. What is this? Be ready. We're gonna. We've been staying ready. Everyone's been working out and conditioning, and you know, doing whatever they can. So, come February 15th, just get ready to see a good match. Welcome listeners to the New England Free Jacks new podcast, Pathways, where we look at the pathways that currently exist and are being refined within New England rugby and rugby across America. The highlights and the lowlights, the challenges that exist within these pathways, and most importantly, the stories. Our fans, our players, our staff, and those working hard to grow the game across America and New England. Today, we've got a very exciting installment where we're going to be looking at these pathways from a player's perspective. Jackson Thebus, Tig Leader, and Evan Geist. Buckle up and enjoy. Let's ride. It's the top. It's still going. Flipped in field. It's Champagne Rugby from the Free Jacks. Let's ride. All right. Welcome, Free Jacks Nation, uh, to Pathways. This is the Free Jacks new podcast, taking a look at rugby in America. Where it's been, where it's going, the challenges, the difficulties, the highlights, and most importantly, the stories behind the players, the staff, the fans, and the people working to grow the game of rugby in America. My name is Tom Kindly. Uh, I've been in America now for four years. I came through rugby back home in New Zealand, worked for a couple of organizations back home. And since I came over to America, spent some time up at Dartmouth College, uh, bounced around a little bit, got involved with USA Rugby, was lucky enough to go to the Rugby World Cup, and I've been working full-time with the New England Free Jacks, uh, one of the world's greatest organizations ever since our inception uh, in the end of 2018. So stoked to be here um, and we're stoked to have our panel on today. Uh, we've got an awesome panel on, Jackson Thebus, Evan Geist, and Ty Leader. Can't wait to get this started, lads. It's going to be a lot of fun. Jackson, how are you? Doing great. How are you, TK? Very good, mate. Very good. And we've all kind of got you guys more than me, but we've all got incredible stories of, on how we got into the game and kind of where it's taken us. But you've got a very interesting story in coming from a D1 program, a football program, American football program, and transitioning to rugby and professional rugby. Can you tell us a little bit kind of about that journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started out of high school. I went to Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon, and played Division Three football. Uh, after the first season, I decided to transfer to UM and uh, pursue playing for the Grizz. I did the open school tryout in winter and didn't make the team. And then the next year I did it again and would eventually make the team. Uh, and then after that, yeah, I started playing O-line and gained 100 pounds. Um, I tried to go pro and it didn't work out. So I ended up going to uh, my master's program of a business administration out east outside uh, Boston in Beverly, Massachusetts. And out there, the uh, head coach for the men's rugby team at Endicott College was my head coach in high school for football and rugby. And so I started playing with him. And then I started practicing with Mystic River with Josh Smith and those guys. And then eventually I started playing with them. And then I ended up with the contract with the Free Jacks. Brilliant. And what have the biggest differences been from, you know, a football program, a D1 program to professional rugby and even club rugby as well? Yeah. Uh, D1 football is every second minute of your day is scripted and down to the second. We had film every morning, lifting class, and then, you know, we'd be there until seven or eight o'clock at night. Um, and so with rugby, when you have a lot more free time and it's up to you to, to kind of make your own schedule and how it can work around the rugby practices and games, you have to be very smart and efficient with your time and, you know, well-organized and planned out. Yeah, brilliant. And maybe you've got an awesome transformation photo that that some of our foreign lads in particular were, were shocked when they saw that. You went from, what, 350 pounds or so? Yeah, so I 315 was the most. I My sophomore year in college before I started playing football, I was 200. 
And then I was 315 when I did my pro day at the end of my senior year. And then I dropped back down to 230 when I was playing sevens. And now I'm at about 250. How good. And now you're an agile lock. I think you made something like 23, 26 tackles against, was that Rooney or Utah? It might have been Utah. It was Utah, yeah. Yeah, Utah, 23 tackles. Get around the field like a machine. So amazing crossover story and hopefully the first of many that we'll have at the Free Jacks. Um, Tyke, were you deported from Ireland? What made you come over? Tell us a little bit, a little bit about your journey to our national team here at the USA, in the USA. Yeah, land of opportunity, TK. We all hear it, you know, in our little island in Ireland, but um, genuinely, I think it's true. Um, for me, uh, just growing up in west of Ireland, a small little town, uh, played rugby there. It's obviously much more of a traditional sport, so I was fortunate to go through the old underage system uh, and then signed professionally with Connacht Rugby, spent a few years there before relocating to the States. But, um, did I get kicked out, immigrated? Uh, uh, I actually went via Italy, interestingly, which was, um, which was a good journey. But then from there, I moved on to the States. Yeah, And since then, the last five years has been absolutely amazing for me between education getting my undergrad and now pursuing my master's alongside playing professionally in San Diego Legion. And now obviously with, as you so accurately put, one of the world's best organizations. Um, and here we are at the Free Jacks. Yeah. And in between that, I was really fortunate to pick up two caps last season for the USA Eagles and I'm um, hoping for more. But yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a whirlwind and I'm very happy to have settled here at the Free Jacks in Boston. Yeah, brilliant, mate. And we're very lucky to have you. I think you're from your Mrs. Cottage down in North Carolina at the moment have you taken a knee yet down there um i'm i've been peacefully kind of observing and giving a bit of support but no not, not nothing oh excuse me um i missed the banter there tk um yeah not, not yet maybe in the, in the in the near future yeah we'll see how that reason <laughs> process goes <mate. laughs> no sweet and mate tell me a little bit in all seriousness so i actually lived with you in our first year in our exhibition season and what an experience that was for me a wee youngster from New Zealand living with two, two, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, the, the, Irish, the Irishman and yourself and, uh, and Connick Hendrigan, um, great people in yeah. fairness. So I remember yeah, sitting on our couch and wall, watching man. your debut against Chile and you scoring in the corner, scoring a <laughs> cheap one in the right-hand corner. Tell me a little, yeah. little bit about that debut experience. Yeah, uh, um, I wouldn't call it a cheap one, TK, you know. I, thought, I reckon I was over the moon thrilled to, 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 to like score I think it was my second touch or third touch so yeah I know I, I was it was just amazing firstly to be making my debut for the United States was something that um was just yeah in itself surreal um I never thought it would happen even when I moved to the States five years prior um I definitely had ambitions to play but if you know as, as a lot of the guys have we have different bumps and um kind of obstacles in our journey and I definitely had a few but um to, to make my debut down in Chile definitely a bit of more of a random one um I wasn't can't say I was too aware of Chilean rugby background but it was like an amazing experience to be doing so um and then I remember like calling home was one of the more one of the more kind of I guess proud phone calls I've ever made just to my parents after who'd been watching from from Ireland and just kind of my head was spinning um so on the back of the game, and then obviously the nerves before the uh, your first cap song, having to sing that on the bus. But uh, yeah, just overall, just like amazing, amazing. Looking back, I still kind of pinch myself. But naturally enough, once you get a kind of a taste of something, I think you you want to get more of that as well. So fingers crossed, uh, those kind of days will be you know in the future as well for me. Yeah, brilliant, mate. No, great experiences for you, and you know it's shaped you as a leader within our Free Jacks organization, all the good work you're doing out in the community. So we're very happy to have you. Um, and I guess kind of contrary to popular belief, I speak to a lot of people back home and across the world who think, you know, USA, there's all this money. It must, must be really glamorous. Tell me about the MLR. Fact of the matter is we are in our infancy and a lot of us are really fighting just to make it work and to, to help to grow with the organization. Even guys, you're a great example of this. Can you, Tell us, mate, a little bit about your experience and how you got into professional rugby and what you've got to do day-to-day -to, -day to make it work as a professional rugby player. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of funny when I think about it. Um, I first, I think I got noticed, well, I kind of built my way up through the American club system. Um, played Colorado, or played uh, college rugby at Colorado State. So um, kind, I always wanted to be an athlete. I played football, basketball, baseball in high school. So 
Um, but none of those worked out to take to the next level. So I decided to play rugby in college. Um, always a competitive guy, but that wasn't really a sport I grew up with or a sport that was on my mind to take to the next level until I uh, played club with the Barbos um, and we won the uh, D2 Natty. So that was a, <clears throat> that was a lot of hard work, but it's so funny because I think Josh Smith was there with Mystic and that's the first time he saw me play, but um, oh, can we have some film? And I was thinking it was so funny because I was in such ragtag clubs or whatever. Like I never even had a game filmed in college, in club, anything like that. So um, my only film really came from after the Barbos. I had an opportunity in Canada. Our Barbos coach set me up to play under one of his old teammates, Jeb, up in Canada, Jeb Sinclair. So um, that's kind of where I got some film, uh, communicated with Josh and Mags, Alex Magleby. And uh, from there, I got my opportunity. But once I moved over, just to make a, a long story short, um, being from Colorado, I didn't know anyone in Boston. Um, just kind of left my life behind there. Um, got a, a late night bar job. So this whole season in the MLR has been a bit of a struggle. Um, I'd go to practice 6 a.m. or whenever we'd start, I'd wake up at 6. We'd start around 8. Um, train, lift all day till about 3 and then go work a bar job from four to midnight, a quick turnaround, six hour turnaround, just to, just to make ends meet and make it work. So um, I'd say it's tough, but honestly, it's been a great experience, built a ton of character and getting to step on the field after all that work has been super gratifying. So uh, yeah. Yeah. No, brilliant. No, even you're, you're a top man and, and we're lucky to have people like yourself who are really busting ass to make it work, to be a professional rugby player. Um, I think back to, to San Diego, I think it was February. Uh, it must have been our third game, third game of our, of our first season in, in Major League Rugby, and you made your debut in that blue scrum cat. Yeah. Um, mate, I was nearly in tears. I was that happy for you up in the box there. Tell us a little bit about that experience. I know you were stoked. Yeah, you know, most of the – I was nervous before the game, right? It's, I've never played at that level, but, you know, once I get on the field um, – during that game or a few games after when I played NOLA, that kind of goes away. I'm comfortable. I don't really notice anything else. But um, in that game beforehand, I had a little bit of the jitters. All right, finally, this is a the pinnacle of a year, year and a half, a couple injuries of rehab to just get onto the field. And I only played about 10 minutes. But uh, so the actual gameplay wasn't anything to write home about. But I did put a little fo – I have a photo saved of my dad who um, like this, this is what meant something to me. If you guys can see it on there, but it's my That's dad. Good. He's watching TV and the announcers kind of mentioned my name and my story. So I think the debut meant a lot to me, but mostly my family. They're, oh, my son, you know, he worked hard. He made it to be a professional athlete, whether it was 10 minutes or the whole game, you know, so um, that was pretty important. Yeah. Mate, that, no, that's awesome. And you've sort of formed that crux of Boston rugby, essentially, of New England rugby, yourself and the group of guys that are there training day in, day out. We've got our great trainer, SNC, Jared Collison, there, sort of looking after the ship while everyone else is away. And I guess for you, mate, what were the biggest things that you noticed coming from club rugby and then now being immersed in this environment where you've got 15 guys who have played rugby since they were five years old and, you know, we're being as professional as we can be? How did you find that experience and what were your kind of biggest takeaways from that? It was different in a great way. Actually, a little less of a load on my body. Uh, club rugby, all right, we're really grinding for the national championship. Tig might even know he won a, a club natty as well. Some of his forwards or whatever, you might ask a little bit more of, right? You got to go. You got to go out there and you know pull a jacks and make twenty six tackles. But you might have a game on Sunday, even in the playoffs after you just played in Saturday. So uh, it's more controlled, I'd say. Um, and then similar to Jackson's D one. Football, though, I felt like we're under the watch. Jared's programming for me, practice is programmed for us. We just kind of have to show up and continually improve. The, the progress that I made in a year, year and a half of pro rugby, I felt was nearly triple of five or six years of club just because the amount of time you're training, um, the coaches, and then obviously your teammates who play at such a higher standard. Um, you know, that's probably the biggest thing was – uh, teammate coaching to help you improve so um, that's what I know most. yeah brilliant essentially mate you go to work nine to five 
you know, it's all there for you. It's up to you to put in the work and get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Where before I'd have to program my own lifts or what I, it's really up to you, you know, it's your own self-discipline. So, um, but I found it, uh, you can make huge progress if you can get in the system. So. Brilliant. And, and we talk about pathways and how, you know, the, the objective of, the, of this podcast is to show the different pathways and the pathway we're trying to create from the grassroots to professional rugby. And essentially we're trying to get guys like yourself even into the system at a younger age and learning to learning the game at a younger age so that by the time you get to the professional scene, you've already got 10 years of rugby under your belt. That's where we're trying to get to. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then Jackson, let's throw it back to you, mate. Could you tell me either your favorite or your funniest free Jack memory? Favorite or funniest? Uh, I think my favorite memory, I have a lot of funny memories, but I think my favorite memory is beating Rooney and just celebrating in the locker room and just being with everybody and seeing the, how hard we worked and everything and all that come to fruition, basically. Brilliant. That's awesome. And then Tig, let's throw that over to you, mate. Favorite or, or funniest free Jack memory? Um, from the same game, but funny slash random. Um, when we scored that try with Brad Hamopo, when I, I just put a, put a bomb, as we call it, in rugby up in the sky and the ball randomly just trickled and hopped off the crossbar, which, and we scored a try. I mean, having played, like, played a few hundred games of rugby in my life and watched just as much. I've never, ever, ever seen that happen. It was just such a freak series of events. So, um, yeah, that was definitely, when we scored the try, I was just kind of standing there, just chuckling to myself, like, whoa, that actually, that actually happened. And I'm sure you can find it if you Google it. Um, just surreal, kind of random series of events. Yeah, no, it certainly was. I remember, Jackson, you were right up there too. I think you were busting your gut and behind Brad Hamopo, you might have scored that if uh, not for Brad. A little, little less, it wasn't quite as tubby. You know, I might have been able to catch him, I guess. Next season, Jackson. <laughs> to be Next big, season. You know? No, good stuff. And then Evan, you, mate, favourite or funniest free Jack memory? I mean, the debut is probably hard to look over. Yeah, I probably would go with funniest then. Um, I'm not much of a social guy, I'd say myself, but I got in trouble for being late once and had to make a video. And my, I think that was my funniest was having to, was doing all this weird stuff for reasons why you should be a Free Jacks fan and um, kind of got to get out of my shell and stuff. So anyways, I got in trouble for being late, but it turned out to be one of my favorite memories is making that. If I remember correctly, Evan, you crawled out of a toxic waste parking lot <laughs> pond. Yeah. I believe I iced over one. Yeah. yeah iced over. Oh, it was iced over. Yeah. I don't even think frogs live in that water. Yeah. Nothing does. Yeah. No. So yeah. I will have to get that video sent out as a, a wee refresher. Um, Ty, you do a lot of work in the community um, with our academy. And we talk about the academy at the moment. It's mainly virtual, the work that we're doing. Can you expand on kind of what we offer and kind of what we're doing, what we're trying, what our objectives are and where we're looking to go? Yeah, so like like you referenced earlier, like trying to get the likes of Evan Jackson playing rugby when they're ten years of age versus twenty or whatever it may be, um, and like they're the opportunities I think we're afforded in the more traditional rugby playing countries. So the the, the academy system is just we're launching with the free jacks. Obviously now it's challenging with the kind of the coronavirus and having to interact through Zoom all the time. Um, that's definitely been a first in just trying to to engage, and um, it takes a whole it's a completely different, like, I guess the way you engage and interact with the players has been challenging, but at the same time, we're just trying to give them, give them that opportunity and get the players on that pathway to progress from whether it's, you know, a 10 year old through the club ranks in new England into collegiate and then hopefully on to play for the free Jacks. I think that's the pathway we're trying to create. And um, like, there's so much talent in new England. There's so many just players like, similar to Evan, just like who want to get better and want to learn. So those of us that have, again, been fortunate to pick up, you know, a whole lot of information just through through our experiences elsewhere. Um, like it, it's it's I love I love the opportunity to give back. And one of one of the guys who I met first met five years ago when he was probably twelve or thirteen, um, coaching the Boston Irish Wolfhounds. It was just like it was great to kind of interact with him, coach him. I could see he was talented, and we stayed in contact over the years. And you know, he's after signing to go to, to um, Lindawood, Lindawood University, you know, one of the top two or three colleges in the country. I also attended there. So like, things like that, it was, it was pretty cool for me to see, you know, firsthand already this pathway exists after only you know, a few years. And who knows where it's going to be um, in 5, 10, 15 years. And with, the, like, with all the work we're doing and all the great people in the Free Jacks organization, I think it's, 
you know, that's pretty exciting. And I think the players we have already in our academy, they're fantastic. But just like the crave and want to get better is, is, is challenges you as a coach as well. You, you want to keep providing them with the best information. So, you know, you put them in, you, you give them the best kind of foot in the door or um, opportunity to progress. So, yeah, the academy has been, been really enjoyable and something yeah, that I'm privileged to be a part of. Yeah, mate. Cool. And I know we've, we've already engaged with 534 academy yeah. participants, be it coaches or I think it's more than that, actually. It might be like 580 between our players and our coaches. And we want to we increase that number exp exponentially, don't we? Yeah. And like last season in our kind of exhibition season, Tony Pecora and myself got the opportunity just to uh, travel all over New England and we coached over 2,000 people. So that even... You know, all the amount of people we've already engaged with is 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 um, staggering, and there's so there's so many more people out there who want us to come and, and work with their teams or get their get their youth players into our system or the older guys maybe into independence, which is the equivalent of our A team. Um, so now, as I said, like the the crave and want of information uh, is is there, and you know, like that's all we can ask for is really enthusiastic players. Um, so you know, look, it's it's been brilliant. Brilliant. And it's funny that you, you mentioned Lindenwood because we've actually got Josh Macy, your old heck, do, were you there while he was there? Yeah, yeah, I was studying there Yeah, at the time. Yeah, no, he, he's a brilliant coach, smart guy, great guy. Yeah, Josh Macy, Lindenwood rugby's head coach, um, traditional powerhouse of the collegiate rugby scene, and then James Willox, obviously our technical advisor and also collegiate All-Americans head coach um, on next week. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, so one I'm going to ask you all, um, what would be some advice you would offer to an aspiring high school or collegiate rugby player with aspirations of making it to the professional game? Kevin, do you want to kick us off with what you would say to a, a guy or girl with aspirations of playing professional rugby advancing down the pathway? I mean, if I can make it there, you can make it there. All you got to do really is sounds pretty cliche but it's just like uh stick to it put your mind to it um you're gonna you're gonna have adversity I showed up with the free jacks with a broken foot first practice back finally cleared from that you know tore my hammy and it's like you can just keep taking those as they come um rehab but probably the biggest thing would be to play rugby that's something that I didn't do as much in high school or college even, I'd go play my games, go to practice, then go like hit the weight room or something. But um, if you can go play touch, I think go get a ball in your hands, play rugby, kind of get a, more of a flow of the game and understanding of that, especially, you know, watching rugby too once, once it starts back up. Um, I think that'd be my biggest advice is sort of immerse yourself in the game more than um, maybe just the physical side or, you know, whatever your strengths are, probably work on what you're weak at, so, yeah. Brilliant, and Jackson? Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, Evan hit it perfectly. I guess another aspect of trying to raise rugby participation in America is just promoting youths to play multiple sports, not just focus on football or baseball or whatever it is, because that's unfortunately happening a lot now where some kids are one sport athletes when they're seven, in seventh or eighth grade. And I would just say, try to play as many sports as you can all the way through high school. And one couple of years I played rugby and then I did track and then I did tennis. And so you know, just keep widening your athletics and it'll definitely uh, help you. Brilliant. And Tyke? Um, to kind of somewhat piggyback off Evan's, he, Evan's point about just like play rugby, immerse yourself in rugby. Um, but it's, it's amazing to see when you, when you, the, you know, the earlier you get involved in the game, you, you accumulate, by, like, like Evan said, playing touch or whatever games like that, you accumulate so many touches and it, it almost becomes kind of, you know, second instinct, or at least a lot more natural. So just like the earlier, and I guess to Jackson's point, you were playing other sports, you have that kind of hand eye. But just for me, the biggest thing is try and get the ball in someone's hand as early as you can. And like like we're doing with the virtual academy, even if they don't have access to a rugby ball, get a, a football, soccer ball, a toilet roll, whatever whatever you have, just to get comfortable. Because I find um, like growing up in Ireland, we're very comfortable doing things with their with their feet, for example, because we love the Irish sports with feet. Whereas like here, I think. A lot of kids are very comfortable throwing up here. You know, see me like oh, so like just yeah, whereas a rugby is kind of an unnatural that, that passing motion isn't the most natural thing. So the earlier you can get to your hands in the ball, the more natural it becomes, and obviously that accelerates your development. Um, so that's one of the biggest things I preach to players is just like just get your hands in the ball or with one of your mates who's introducing to the game. Just like just 
and spread awareness. We keep talking about how like rugby opens up so many doors and so much opportunity. You've kind of picked up that from Evan Jackson and myself, just the interesting paths and it's such an amazing game. So trying to like instill that on other people, um, the earlier you can, the better that it just, it really truly is an amazing global game that opens up so many amazing doors and friendships uh, and things of that nature. So yeah, the sooner you can get involved, the better. You won't regret it. Brilliant. Great advice, fellas. And I mean, now we've got 13 really strong organizations and the MLR franchises across America. And if they can all, you know, follow our mold of kind of passing that down to the grassroots and, and helping to grow the game, then I think American rugby is going to be well and truly on the up. And we're, we're very passionate about that and very excited as to where it might go. I, I mean, I know reaching out to some of the people within New England, the high school coaches, there's great people there that are already fighting the good fight and we just need to help those people out, you know, and then uh, we're, we're all going to get there. So great advice. Um, cool. We're, our last bit here, uh, and just before we do, I'll just do a quick uh, little PR stunt and show the, uh, I've got that oh. Zoom bundle here. <laughs> you can purchase the, uh, the uh, budgies. You can purchase uh, the polo and all other Frejax merch at shop.frejax.com. Um, we've got a quick fire section. So three questions, relatively quick fire, um, and we'll ask them to all three of you. So the first one is your favorite free jack and why? Let's go. Uh, I guess I can kick off if you want. Ready. Yeah, so like having spent the last year living with fellow Irishman, Connor Kindrigan, although we're mates growing up in Ireland, we weren't like in each other's company 24 seven, but I've never seen the man, like I've never seen a man just the way he eats and interacts. It's just hilarious. Like he's, he's like, like a bull or something, you'd almost call it as, where he's shoveling his food or like hygiene's questionable. Um, but like he's just a gas character to, to spend your time around. So no, I'd, I'd put Connor up there. Mate, I'm completely with you. He's 275 odd pounds, has fake curl like that. And when, <laughs> yes. he, when he eats, he's like, it's the full yeah. finger and it's every finger. It is feral. Entertaining still, without he's like entertaining, but he doesn't always know he's entertaining. Sometimes I can just like it's like a wildebeest or something like just stand back and observe. Um, yeah, gas man. No, big, Matt, he's a legend. Big potato guy, real big potato eater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> I'm sick of them. I'm not a great cook, and he always put potatoes in front of me, and it's like, all right, we get it. It's like we're Irish. We like potatoes, but move on. <laughs> <laughs> he loves a big hash with some hot sauce on it. All right, uh, who's next? Favorite free jack. I'll go. Uh, for me, it's Pawasa. Just off the field, he's really positive and, you know, a good leader. And you just look to him to, you know, get inspiration, working hard or in the weight room or on the field, just seeing how he plays, you know, makes me want to be a better player. And I think it makes all of us watching him play want to, you know, step our game up. Yeah, brilliant. Awesome. Great choice. A little bit about Pawasa. He came from the Fijian Drua. Um, over in the NRC, they play in the Australian competition, and he, uh, I think he's only just hitting his straps, and he's a, a very, very good human. So good choice there, Jacko. And then uh, Evan. I might have to follow suit kind of with Jackson. I love Nalia. I mean, the dude inspires me. He smacks people on the field, and then every weight room session is just hollering. He's hilarious. So, um I don't know. He makes he makes a joke out of everything, but you know when it comes down to it, he's mad serious too. So uh, he's probably my favorite, probably the one I look up to most. I like Striffler too, though, just because him and I have the same tattoos, almost identical on oh. his sleeve. He has like a hammerhead in the exact same spot if you look at the photo. So um, yeah, I like both of them. Yeah, I, I've heard rumors. Um, I've heard rumors even that it's a bit of a fight out between yourself and and Zach as to the Free Jack's best looking bachelor. Not that you're a bachelor anymore, but what, what would you say <laughs> about that? I'd say, uh, you know, the younger one's the prettier one. So that's me. So Zach, can, uh, <laughs> he's growing old, he's married, you know? So yeah, I, I take the number one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's expired, past his expiry date. Oh, um, it's harsh, lads. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, stadium song. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna build a Spotify playlist Everyone will have access to it. It's going to be called the Fred Jacks playlist or similar. Um, and these songs are going to be what we're going to play 
uh, as long as they pass the, uh, the health and safety regulations in our stadium next year. Um, so, fellas, if you've got a song that you listen to religiously or, or it gets you going, whatever it may be, for me, at the Rugby World Cup, um, it, was, uh, it was Monkey. Uh, do you know, uh, Dance Monkey? Dance Monkey. I played every, every game, every, every, in every stadium prior to the game, and I just couldn't get it out of my head that whole time I was over there. So that'd be the one, that would be the one I'd put in there. But let's hear from you guys. What song are you going to go for? I guess um, the, uh, I'll go jump in first. I remember last year we played a game at the Irish Cultural Centre, um, which was quite cool. I mean, being Irish, the whole tradition there. But um, it's easy, it's obvious. But like, shipping up to Boston, um, I was fortunate to be leading the boys out that day. And I remember just kind of hearing it playing over the mic. And like, obviously, it's a, it's a pump-up tune. But just, yeah, I remember walking out, was like, Shh excuse my language, but it was like, all right, this is, this, 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 it just felt way more real and legit and just got the boys pumping. Um, so if we can, if we can um, get shipping out the Boston plane before every home game in Weymouth next year, I'd be a happy man. Yeah, it gets me fired up too. Yeah. Given? Well, I'm going to have to promote my, my oh. love of a little bit of heaviness. Like I, I need a little bit of juice before a game. So I'm going to go with Walk by Pantera. It's pretty well known. It's like, Walk, respect. What are you saying? Like heavy metal. So that's what I'm going for. Walk by Pantera. Lock it in. Final answer. Yeah, we might need a bit, of a, a bit of a background story to that, Evan. You've got a secret talent, mate. You want to let, us, let the fans know, the Project Nation know, what exactly is that talent? It's an, the lack of talent. You can't sing, so you yell. I screamed in a metal band in college. Flood foretold. We were on Spotify. We got kicked off because we stopped making music. Um, but maybe if you look them up on YouTube, you can see a little short video. We might have a couple left over. In fairness to you, I watched, uh, I watched one on YouTube when we first kind of came across. And I'd say, similar to your rugby, like you, you, you're intense and you, you go for it. There's no kind of half arse attempt. So. In fairness to you, like, uh, that was, it was I, think we're, I think we were shocked. I think when I first saw it, I was shocked. It was like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. And then your, pers your personality probably didn't necessarily like, reflect what I expected from watching it on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend people to have, have a look at that. It's, it's, it's entertaining. For sure. Right now. Yeah, that definitely makes for some pretty, um, some pretty good vibrations in the weight room sometimes even, doesn't it? Huh. Yeah, I think so. All the time. No, I'm just kidding. And Jackson. Oh, you know, I've been thinking about this. And I think if we were to play Sweet Caroline sometime during like a water break or commercial break like they do at Fenway, that'd be pretty cool. Brilliant. Awesome. Nice. Um, look, fellas, that's, that's all we've got for our first, uh, our first episode of our Pathways podcast. Look, it's been a pleasure having you on. Have you got any parting comments that you'd like to give to Free Jacks Nation in lieu of our 2021 season set to kick off February 15th, 2021? Yeah, I guess just I'll jump in there. Just like, like the, although we never got that first home game, the amount of support we had in leading up to that, um, I think it was a sellout, it was like, it was overwhelming, it was fantastic. So, Let's just hope, although this has been far from ideal, the whole coronavirus situation and the season being cut short, but like there was unreal momentum built. And like that was just down to like the really the great people of New England. And like I keep referring to like they want to get better, whether it's a player or coaches. Like they love rugby and crave it. So um, I hope, I don't doubt it, like that momentum we built is only going to, you know, be ride that wave even further next year. And it's, it's, it's genuinely, it's, you get like, you get the goosebumps thinking about running out in Weymouth again with shipping up to Boston and Sweet Caroline and Evan on the mic. Like it's, it's exciting. Brilliant. And uh, Evan Jackson, anything you'd like to, uh, to add on? Um, just be ready. We're going to, we've been staying ready. Everyone's been working out and conditioning and, you know, doing whatever they can. So come February 15th, just get ready to see a good match. Uh, for me, I just would say, um, just stoked to represent Boston. I think uh, it's a great sports town. I'm pretty new here. Uh, this is, probably my second year here but um, really can't wait for a home game um, we played a, you know a few in the car cup and uh, actually started building some more stands for that first home game coming up because we we had so much uh, support so um, that's my biggest excitement and um, hope you guys are looking forward to it as well 
Brilliant. No, thank you, gentlemen. And we, we love New England rugby. We're fired up about the cause that we're, we're putting in all this work for. And we are, we are really excited about what's to come. Um, it's the fans that make it. And like these guys said, you know, we had a sellout crowd for the first home game that never eventuated. But we are excited to get down into the grassroots, grow the game, do our part. Um, in the meantime, we have got our LTP free Learn to Play series um, underway. It's a four-week series. It's free, perfect for youth, people you want to introduce to the game. Get them to sign up at academy.freejacks.com. We've got our IDP 12-week academy in-depth rugby series going on at the moment. And we've just kicked off our ramp up to rugby uh, for the month of June. And we've got some really special guests on that, including Christy Kershey from the Women's Sevens National Team, uh, a real rock star in her talking about sevens, strategy and skills of the game. We've got the likes of Ty, Sam Beard, local hero, Tony Papera, um, a raft of legends, Josh Larson, uh, the Canadian um, engine room, the big rig there. And look, we're really excited um, to get this podcast underway as well. So first episode, Pathways, um, signing off. Ty, break it down. All right, boys, you ready? Free Jacks mount up. Let's, Let's go. go.